Jesus had a time that he wouldn't be here in the body. But his name would be here. So we have a right to use that name. That name belonged to the church. As a matter of fact, you can't receive nothing without using that name because there is no other name. We have a right, and that's going to be my subject briefly. You know, I'm, I don't speak long. And uh, our right is to use the name of Jesus. We have a right to use his name. And one of the reasons why we have a right to use his name is because there is no other name. Yeah, you can't use any other name when, it's, when you're dealing with the spirituality and the spiritual things of God. Because Jesus is the only one. The angels told Mary she should bring forth a son and the name shall be called Jesus and he shall save his people from their sin. The key word is found in John Gospel and John Gospel means to believe. <coughs> faith unlocks our understanding and faith come by hearing and hearing the word. Faith released the spirit of activities in our life. Let's go to the gospel according to John, the 16th chapter, and we're going to ask the reader to read, beginning at the 23rd verse. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Now that day when this revelation was put in the Bible and written is this day. He spoke of another day. In that day you should ask me nothing. He was talking about this day. All right, read, read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father, the first, the first, the first, the Father, the first. Amen. Okay, read on, the Father. He will give it you. He will give it to you. Read on. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Hitherto. Now, that word hitherto means before. Before. See, you have asked nothing in my name. Nothing in my name. Because when Jesus was on earth, you didn't have to ask anything in his name. You didn't have to ask anything in Jesus' name when he's on earth. He walked with his disciples. Did you ever have his disciples ask him anything in his name? You didn't have, they didn't, they didn't, he was there. He was right there with them. So you didn't have to ask in his name. But Jesus had a time that he wouldn't be here in the body. But his name would be here. His name, his promises would be here. See? All right, let's read. Let's read a little bit further. Ask and ye shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. But you must ask in his name because he is not here in the body. He's not here in the flesh. For 33 years he walked up on the earth in the flesh. And his disciples, he taught his disciples. In the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, uh, Jesus taught his disciples Mount of Olives. He told them about things that would happen in the future, but we don't have to do that. We already know we have a revelation. If you feel with the Holy Ghost, you should have a revelation. Amen. You should listen to the voice of God speaking in your heart. Yes. In your heart. So we have a right to use that name. That name belongs to the church. As a matter of fact, you can't receive nothing without using that name because there is no other name. 
when it comes to the spiritual aspects of life, there is no other name. Jehovah Jireh, we have all of those Old Testament names, but Jesus is the most powerful name there is. Amen. The devil trembled in his name. Sick, sickness disappear when you use it by faith. Heaven talks back when you use it. The, the, the waves, the sea, be still when they see Jesus. The wind know his name. When he said, peace be still, they know that Jesus is talking. And they're not going to keep up no noise and be moving around either. They're going to do what he said. If you be willing to be in obedience, you shall eat the good of the land. You can have what you said. In his name. He sits at the right hand of God. Making intercession for us. When I pray I say. In your name. It goes on down to the Father. Come back through the Holy Ghost. Nobody can do you like God. No one of Joel said. When he's in my presence. The hair rose up on my legs. Nobody can make the hair rose up, rise up on your leg but Jesus. When his presence is there. You don't know. We haven't had the joy that he had for us because we couldn't take it. Not in the flesh. You think we can raise our hand. You think you got some joy. You can't have it because the flesh won't let you have it. You can't have it because fear won't let you have it. You can't have it because you don't have the faith to have it. But once, you, once you're out of this body, when you're up there by the throne and, and shouting around Jesus, and he's in the middle, oh, joy unexp unexp un unspeakable. Dying is no problem to a saint. Oh, they just hate to leave their loved one, and they don't know the real the real blessing when God called you. When God called you. All right, let's read a little bit further. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be Ask, full. listen to what he said. Ask in his name that you shall receive that your, that mine that everybody that's saved and know God and how to ask, joy shall be what? Full. Full. We're not full of joy complaining. We're not full of joy discouraged, head down. Waiting for a pay paycheck so we can get a little joy. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but that joy don't compare with the joy that you can have when you don't have nothing, when God is on your side. Or should I say when you're on his side, because God is always on our side. The Bible said, John 16 and 1, preserve me, O Lord, for indeed do I put my trust. He preserved us from accidents. He preserved us from tragic things, from crises that we cannot take without committing suicide. People kill themselves when they're going through things. The verse 8 in that same chapter said, I have set the Lord always before me. You always should be conscious of God. He's at my right hand, and I shall not be moved. Don't let nothing move you. Don't think up on your obstacles. We have, a love, we have enough of them. Every day is something. If you confuse, if all you think of, I got a headache. Yeah, you might have one. You don't have to think about it because the more you think about it, the longer you'll keep it. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Think 
up on the promises of God, not on your obstacles, not on the things that's happening to you, not on the bad things that happen. The Bible said in Proverbs, so is the man thinking in his heart, so is he. When you start thinking about things, negative things, things that's not working right, you become part of that because it's in your mind. It's in your mind. That's why he said, ask anything in my name. Yes, nothing, nothing in the world can, def can, can, can actually keep Jesus from blessing you because of his name is the only name. Yes. Call on his name. Call on his name. That's how you get saved. That's why the old church said, call on him. And keep calling. Keep calling. He's here. God is always present. Moses said, if you don't go with me, if your presence don't go with me, I'm not going. God said, I can't show you all of me. Stand on a rock, and when I pass by, you see my hand apart. You'll never see all of them in this flesh. He's just saying the same thing. You can't see all of God in this flesh. It's until you leave the flesh. Nobody can see. You can't see him. You got to be dead from this flesh. You can fast and pray and get a revelation from God, and he can tell you what to do. He can, he can enhance your ministry. He can enhance your faith. Your faith. This is why the faith grows, and the more your faith grows, the more enlightened. More enlightened you come to. He's a light. 119 son, he's a light. He's a light. He light us up. We can see ourselves. We can see our mistakes. Don't you know a person that don't know God don't know when they're wrong? For most, most of the time. They just do things, don't know when they... They don't know they're going to get shot on the corner down there when they try to rob 7-Eleven. But if you save, you, you'll never think about robbing nobody. The Lord is so good. Now, see, I have always been saved, so I know the difference in being a sinner and a saint. I ain't talking about an ain't. I'm talking about a saint. You know the characteristic of an ain't. He works hard all day, and at the end of the day, don't have nothing but some crumbs. God saved us to have more than crumbs. Ain't busy. He's busy. He busy all day long, going and coming, bringing crumbs. At the end of the day, that's all he have. We work so hard sometimes, and all we have at the end of our day is some crumbs. Because we don't have faith to receive anything beyond some crumbs. Look at somebody and says, let them crumbs go. Let them crumbs go. The Bible said, God, the light and the prosperity of the righteous. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. Seek and you shall find. All right, read, read. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. Uh -huh. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. I won't speak to you in Proverbs. I don't need no illustration. I'm going to speak to you, your heart. It's going to be the Holy Ghost. See, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, your body is a temple of God, and the Holy Ghost drill it in you. Right. Now, you got all that power. You got all that power. Because the Holy Ghost is the third person of the Trinity. Yeah. And when, God, when Jesus left the earth 
Amen. He sent the Holy Ghost back the day of Pentecost to talk to us and to teach us. The Holy Ghost took Jesus' place. We can't see him, but we have him. Jesus could not put his physical body in all of us, but the Holy Ghost can abide in all of us. And he had the same power that Jesus had when he cast out devils. He had the same power that Jesus had when he fed 5,000, 4,000 on a little of nothing. He can make a way out of no way. Look at somebody and say, don't worry about the way God will make a way for you. He's able. All you need to do is get saved, become dedicated and committed, and believe in him. And whatever you have to go through to get to where Jesus wants you to be, where he can use you without you being puffed up and elevated up like, like the devil was, he wanted to build himself above God, and God excommunicate him, excommunicate, excommunicate him out of heaven. So they saw him fall as lightning. There's nothing like a saved life, and the reason why I can say that I live two lives, and this is the last life I want to live, a saved life. Because the other life was taking me to hell. This life is pulling me out of hell and taking me to heaven. That's why I'm so conscientious about living saved. It don't bother me because I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't want to be like nobody else. Because I'm already rich in Christ. My God owned the ships on the sea. My God owned the moon. My God owned the stars. <laughs> I don't know what your God owned, but I wouldn't serve him. Poor God. The devil don't have nothing. And he told me that he come. He come to save. He come to have, give us life and that more what? If you don't have enough, tell God, I don't have enough. But make sure you take what he can give you because you might have to suffer before you get some more. He got to bring, he got to bring us to a, a place in him where when you really get enough, you, you, know, you won't be lifted up in pride. You'll still, you'll yet come to a prayer meeting. You'll yet pray. You won't get a, a ticket and go to Hawaii. You won't say, I can take a vacation now. Because the Apostle Paul, you know, he said, you know, I learned to be content. God wants us to learn to be content, and when we get a lot more than we already have, we yet should be content. Yeah. Well, I'm just about finished here. Oh, God is so good to me. All right, let's read just a little bit further. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. Uh-huh. And that day ye shall ask in my name. You shall ask. That's what it said. In that day, that day, he said, that day, he said, that day, that day was this day. Amen. That day is the very day that we're living in now. In that day, you should ask what? In my name. In my name. And whatsoever you ask. Because there's no other name. You try to find, even in the Old Testament, he said, there's no other name. I'm God and there's no other name. Okay, read it, read it. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Uh-huh. For the Father himself loveth you. Uh-huh. Because ye have loved me. And you have love, believed. see, you love his name. You love Jesus. And because he sent Jesus, then he going to love you. That's the Bible. 
You obey Jesus and then God going to bless you. We got to understand the Trinity. They're all one. They're all one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, let's, let's read. I want to read that verse. I know I read it before. But read uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16. Start at that. If we read it before, I, I have to keep reading them, keep them before you. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. See, we are the temple of God. Read on. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Notice, notice. The Spirit of God is not in this building. Until we come in here. Amen. Until we come in here. When we come in this building, if we are filled with the Spirit of God, then the Spirit of God is in here. Ain't nobody in here shouting until we come in here. Ain't nobody preaching until we come in here. Ain't nobody singing until we come in here. If I ever come in here by myself and I hear somebody singing and see them shouting, I'm going to leave. I will leave. My mother, years ago, downtown in L.A., they was witness in the park downtown, and somebody got rough out there, and the lady that she was witness with said, I'm getting out of here. My mother said, I'm leaving too. <laughs> so if I see anybody, if I hear a voice, I, if I hear a voice in here, I have to look around. When there's nobody here but me, I have to go downstairs and say, who's talking? <laughs> Who's talking? Do you know there's such thing as a ghost in your imagination? In your imagination? In the country, people used to smoke pipes. And you know when they died, you could smell that smoke. No, they, ain't, they don't know that. Well, that man's spirit is just smoking. All right, read, read, read. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Uh -huh. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Now listen. Know ye not. I love those scriptures. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost only comes in here when we come in here. And we come in here as the body of Christ in his name and we can have a good time but when we leave this place is dark this place is dark but you're never left alone because the Bible said you are the temple of God and what the Holy Ghost what of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Which is in you. Now, let me go to another verse of Scripture. I want you to hold that, and then we're going to move on. I want you to get John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Verse 4. The Holy Ghost, and remember the word, in you. Look at somebody, in you. In you. Now, if you feel with him, he's in me. Ye are of God, little children. Now, ye are of God, little children. That means you humble, you meek, you easy to get along with. When they call you little children in the Bible, you humble. You're obedient. Little children, that's what you are. All right, read, read. And have overcome them. You have, look at somebody, I've overcome all this stuff. I've overcome my problem. I overcome my sickness. I overcome my hang-ups. You have overcome them. Why? Why? Because greater is he because that is in you. Because the Holy Ghost is in you. You didn't overcome nothing until you got saved and got too old to move. But little children, you are of God and have overcome them. You believe the Bible? Believe That's something. 
How could we overcome anything until we got saved? We get mad. We get upset. And you say, well, how can that be? Because some folks save and they haven't overcome nothing because they don't pray. They don't study the word. They don't have a revelation. They don't seek the word. They don't seek God. You should seek me and find me. We have God, but the Bible yet told us we should seek him and find him. That means we got to find some more of him. We got to get a raise. I read, 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 read. Because greater is he that is in now, you. Now, why? Why? The Holy Ghost that's in me is greater than he that's where? In the world. In the world. So why should I let the things of the world excite me? When I used to, when I was saved, I was drinking wine, white pork, dog pork, <laughs> pork. I've drank all that stuff. And wine make you sick. Then you drank vodka, but you had to pay more. <laughs> but I never did overcome nothing. I never did overcome nothing. You go to sleep on the fifth, and then work up again until the seventh. <laughs> I've been there. You park your car in somebody's driveway, you thought you were parking in yours. Some of y'all been there. You know it. But when you get the mind, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. When you get that mind, you, you got your senses. You have your senses. You have your senses. I said when you get that mind, you have your senses. Because God is good. Okay, okay. Let's go to Matthew 21, 21, and verse 22. 21. You have to let the Bible, act like the Bible is true. Act like the Bible is true. When you read it, don't doubt it. Act like it's true. You may not understand everything, but act like the Bible. Look at somebody and say, act like the Bible is true. Your birth certificate got your name, date, birth, and act like it's true. All right, read, read, read. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. If ye have faith and doubt not. If you have faith and doubt not. Read on. Ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree. You shall not only, see he had cursed the fig tree. Do this, but you shall do what? But also, if ye shall say unto this mountain. Say, you got a mountain in your life? You got a mountain in your life? You got a mountain in your life? Say unto the mountain. You got to say it. You got to believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. Confess what you believe in your heart. And you got to keep on saying it. Sometimes we have to seek God for nights, for days, all night. That's the price you have to pay until your faith builds up to the circumstances. 